so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He is going to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, Half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have exhorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I want to do a little exercise with you this morning over the text of the gospel. Uh, when we were at seminary, we would often do two things called, when it came to looking at scripture and studying it, we would do two things, and they were called exegesis and hermeneutics. I'm not going to get into the exact definition of those things, but simply they were methods so that we can go into the text to be able to see the meaning but not only the meaning, but also the application that it would mean for us in our own lives. So if you bear with me, I'm gonna kind of go verse through verse. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Simply, we know here that Jesus did much traveling. Over his three years of ministry, uh, he went from place to place, never really left Israel, but over that small space, constantly went from town to town, sometimes over and over again to preach the good news. And he did so tirelessly, right? Doesn't he say in a place that birds have their nests, other animals have their dens to sleep, but the son of man has nowhere to rest his head. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. So this person here has some interest. Jesus obviously grew in popularity and people wanted to know who he was and what he was about. And this man has that interest, but he could not see him because of the crowd for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus. So we see some practicality on part of the man, right? Uh, the gospel author is saying that he was short and that he couldn't see over the crowd. You ever go to a concert and uh, there's a six foot six person standing in front of you and you're trying to go like this and like that? Well, there are no trees in, in, a, in an arena for you to climb, but uh, you can always find a position. And that's what the man's trying to do. Simply, practically, I want to see him. So as he does, and the gospel continues, when he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus. Come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. This is where the story becomes very interesting. Very interesting indeed. 
Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector. Sometimes that impact culturally and what that meant in society back then can be lost on us because this man was obviously Jewish who became not, you remember Matthew was a tax collector. This person's a chief tax collector. So think of a, a manager at the IRS coming to your place of business to do an audit. And you're probably going to be a little weary and leery of the person and what's going on. You pro we, none of us really care for the IRS. And here's this man who becomes this chief tax collector. He's not collecting taxes for Israel. He's collecting taxes for the enemy, the people who are oppressing them, the Romans. Sometimes that can be lost on us and the impact of what that meant. So how would the rest of the apostles looked at this or even those Jews who are around? They would have been very upset and you'll see how that comes just a little shortly afterwards. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. This was probably also very shocking that Jesus would receive this person with great joy. Someone whom to the rest of society has come a pariah. They don't want nothing to do with this person. I want you to think of people in your own lives. Maybe hate is too strong of a word, but people that you mistrust, dislike, and then all of a sudden you're walking with Jesus and he sees this person, calls them down from the tree, and says, I receive you with great joy. How would that make you feel? A person that you've probably written off and yet Jesus has not. When they all saw this, they began to grumble saying, he has gone to the house of a sinner. When I think of uh, two people that I might mistrust, I gave it away, two people. <laughs> And Jesus calls them down from the tree, accepts them, and goes to their house to eat with them. Again, culturally, sometimes this is lost on us, its impact. What does that mean for you and I? If Jesus were to do that right now with people that we have dubbed as sinners. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, behold, Half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have exhorted anything from anyone, I will repay it four times over. Zacchaeus, upon meeting the Lord, receives some truth about himself. It's interesting that Jesus never condemns him, though he was a sinner like anyone else, and maybe even a greater sinner. Because I'm sure in his own life, as he turned his back on Israel, he probably cut corners and schemed a little bit here and schemed a little bit there, put money away here, put money away there that might not even have been his. And he sees this truth about himself in the encounter with Christ. Jesus never says to him, oh, you're a sinner. You better stop doing this and that and the other thing. And you know, you got mortal sin on your soul and you broke rule number five and you broke rule number seven and all the rest. He doesn't do that. He basically presents the divinity of who he is to this man. This man recognizes it, recognizes it in himself, and all of a sudden now, it's pouring out of him. All this goodness that's flowing in his heart. I will give away half, and I will repay four times over. He's not doing it to make up for sin, necessarily. He's doing it out of love for neighbor because he realizes what he's been missing. Now, the church fathers would tell us, yes, this is a literal story of a short guy who was a chief tax collector, who climbed up on a tree, Jesus saw him, there was a moment of inspiration, he came down, Jesus gave him the gospel, and the man repented. But it's also a very symbolic story. The church fathers would tell us that you and I are Zacchaeus at times. Sometimes we are short in stature, not in height, but in holiness. So we climb the tree, try to do something to have Jesus 
turn his attention to us so that he may call us down. And he does. And there's moments like that in our lives all the time. When Jesus calls us down from the tree and he shows himself to us and reveals truths about ourselves, are we as generous as Zacchaeus? And I don't mean with money. I mean with our lives. Do we give back half of our lives at least to the living God and to others? And finally, in the last uh, paragraph, and Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he sees that Zacchaeus said yes to grace. Now you have to remember everybody who's watching this, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, even Jesus' own apostles. And here is a line that I'm sure many of them hated. Because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. And Jesus doesn't necessarily mean by blood. Yes, he's a Jew, so he's a son of Abraham through descent. But he's a son of Abraham, more importantly, because he is righteous. The man has received faith and is now living it out. You know, people hated Jesus. Really, that's why he was killed. And he was killed because of some of the things he said and did. And this would have been one of them. How dare this man call a chief tax collector our very enemy who has sold us out to the Romans. And he's saying to him, he's a son of Abraham. And not only that, he's saved. How can that be possible? With God, nothing is impossible. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. This man, Zacchaeus, in some sense was lost. In his own greed and even maybe possibly corruption. But he's also trying to get all of the others. You see, Jesus is not only working with one person in this story. He's working the entire crowd. Because they don't realize that they are Zacchaeus as well. And slowly but surely he's trying to get them to that point. Give half back. Like Abraham did. Like Zacchaeus did. Also, more importantly... Who are your brothers and sisters who are stuck up on the tree? Don't you want them to come down and be with us? Or do you want them to always be your enemy? Very interesting passage, one that obviously we can reflect on. There are many things we can point out from this gospel. I'm sure theologians can break it down even further than I did. But I think for our purposes on a Sunday homily, that is enough. So maybe one thing that we could take from here as we leave Mass today is how am I like Zacchaeus? And when Jesus gives me salvation, how much am I willing to give back? God bless you.